spring and the holidays with the Nordic Wear Factory Store. From roasts to quiches to grand size popovers. And don't forget desserts and Nordic Wear's wonderful shaped baking pans. Mention this promotion and receive 5% off your purchase. Visit the Nordic Wear Factory Store in St. Louis Park today. Welcome back to Twin Cities Live at Four. Okay, so you guys know this if you watch the show. It is a favorite of the Rhymers kids for dinner. And it is a good use of that leftover Easter ham, too. I'm talking about carbonara. That's the recipe for this week's Monday night meal presented by the Nordic Wear Factory Store. Rachel Perrin from Kowalski's is here with her version of the spaghetti alla carbonara, <laughs> the Roman classic, which, you know, some people get fired up about, like, different things you put in this. I was going to say, if you want to see people fight, Go on the internet and search carbonara recipes and check the comments. And they it's, will go at it. Uh, add in the word heavy cream to carbonara, oh. and then you will really start some sort of international conflict. Oh. Um, because some people believe that you should never add heavy cream to carbonara. I don't think you're doing that I, today. I'm one of those, but like I said, I but I am deviating. Obviously, ham is not traditional. We usually use guanciale. Um, usually, we use a little pecorino, but we're using what we have on Monday. Yeah, morning. we're inspired by the idea of carbonara, and it's also a favorite in our household because simple and uh, yes satisfying everyone loves it kids every, everyone so it's a, just a great dish to have in your repertoire and it's one that once you know the secret little ratio of cheese to egg you never need the recipe for the rest of your life. If you, you can, can master really carbonara, you will never go hungry. No, no, it's so good. It's the truth. Okay, so I'm very excited to see how you do this so, because I always learn something new from you. Well, and there, as I said, many ways to do it, but the first thing you want to do is get some um, water boiling, and then I'm going to start my pasta. I'm using fresh pasta here today just because it's TV and we need this to cook really fast. About four and a half ounces of this fresh pasta per person should be good. And you're using fettuccine. And I'm using fettuccine because, again, I wanted to use fresh, but you can use dry, yeah. fresh, fettuccine, linguine, or spaghetti. Any of them will work pretty well. You yeah. want the nice long noodles so that you get the effect that kind of trailing through the sauce. I would say don't do angel hair, though. No, it's, it's a little too thin. thin. And frankly, thin. I don't really know what that stuff is good for. Oh, I have some great ideas. Really? For you. I feel like it gets like Again. mushy and a mess. Okay, I'm, you okay. need to change my mind on We're that. We're going to do that next time because right. I love angel hair, but it is it is tricky. You okay. can just barely cook it. You're going to start the sauce, which is one egg. Got it. And then one quarter cup of Parmigiano Reggiano. Now I'm using the Italian imported one. Yeah. This is two ingredients. You want it to be really good. Now this is like the only kind of pre-grated I would get, like when you Absolutely. guys are grating it. Absolutely, because we do this in the store. They did this today. Yeah. And I and I agree with you because it's going to have all the moisture you want for it to make a really nice, silky, beautiful sauce, and it's going to have all that flavor from the moisture. The green top container, guys, listen, you can use that for whatever you want, not this, though. Yeah, not this. And also, it is grated, not shredded. I think that's one other important thing. So I'm going to have you whisk, whisk, whisk until that thing is just no whites, no yolks, no cheese. You're just going to see it's all very, very homogenous and blended together. Okay. Um, that's probably the most important thing here is that this is nice and nice and Because this emulsified. is the sauce, this and is the it. egg is going to cook just with the heat of the pasta. The heat of the pasta plus a little bit of pasta water. And then the only other thing that we're going to put in here before we add the pasta is as much pepper as your heart desires. Well, my heart desires I love a lot, a lot of pepper Me with too. this because the cheese is salty, the ham is salty. So that's my trick. Have this ready before you drop your pasta is my secret. Okay. Just have this done. And then also have done your, if you want, again, very, very non-traditional. This is blasphemous to some people, right. of course. But I like it because it's colorful. It's a little veg. Mm -hmm. It makes it kind of more of a complete meal for me. But this is... This is just a thing that I do. You, you can do the peas do if it. you want. Now, at our house, I always serve peas with carbonara, yeah. but I just do them on the side. I just, like, steam them, and then they kind of end up. Yeah. But it's, it is true. It's, it's the green. It's just a thing. It's just a thing. It's like a mom I like to thing. You have to there. put something green on the table. I like the texture, too, and yeah. I think they have a nice little pop. So that's just a personal thing. As I said, guanciale is typical. People also will use pancetta. But really, any cured, salty pork meat will work okay. So ham fits the bill. We obviously had this for dinner last night, so we've got some left over. The key with both of the things that you're going to mix in there is you want them to be warm. Not yeah. burning hot, because you're going to add them to this egg mixture. But do defrost the peas. Do heat them up. Make sure these ingredients are warm. Warm. Okay. And then it's time for what I like to call butts in seats. Let's do it! Butts in seats <laughs> because this is going to happen fast and I want everybody at the table when this goes. Yeah. <laughs> It's butts and seats time, right? This is my life at home. I love it's this like so It's like scrambled much. eggs and carbonara. I yep. will not make until you are sitting at the table. That's just the rule. That's the way you. it goes. So then what we're going to do is just slowly put in 
a tongue full at a time, a tongue full at a time, not the whole amount. I'm not going to drain it and throw it in there. But what you'll start to see is that the cheese is starting to melt. Yeah. And I don't want to do this too fast because I don't want the temperature to come up above 160. Because if the temperature gets too hot, it's going to scramble that egg, it's going to cook it, and then you're going to get like not the silky smooth it, sauce that you're looking for. And that will really anger all of Italy. <laughs> it will, it will, I mean, it we've already me. upset them enough with the peas. Right. Like we don't need to get with crazy. The ham, the American ham for me. They're like, <laughs> Just, they're crying over there. But, oh, but yes, you can see how the cheese is melting and the sauce is getting kind of thick. But the, the key here really is have it ready and then add it in a little bit of time. The other thing you'll notice is I'm not worried about getting any of this pasta water in here because that pasta water will actually help, again, kind of there's starch in there, there's yeah. salt in there. That's going to help the sauce I'm thicken. Oh, my And gosh. it's just, oof, this is looking okay, so, Rachel. so good. Uh, it's it's an easy, this satisfying, delicious. delicious little dish. Okay, I might say I really love the fettuccine noodles with it. And one thing that I don't do is a little bit of pasta and the stirring method. Oh. I add it all and then stir frantically, and I like your system is way better than mine. Well, it's less stress, and I because I have myself. I've made carbonara hundreds of times. Uh -huh. I have also probably a couple times botched it because I was going too quickly. Mm. Just dump it all in there. The little bit of pasta at a time works. And don't do more than four eggs and a cup of cheese at a time is my other technique. Don't try to make it for six to ten people. Make it for a once. small group. Make it for one, two, three, four at the most, or make it in two batches. And that'll really save you the heartache of scrambled eggs. So That is delicious. Yeah. Great job, Rachel. Okay, you got to make this tonight. So we've got a link to Rachel's recipe on our website, TwinCitiesLive.com. And another thank you to the Nordic Wear Factory Store for presenting our Monday night meals. Hopefully a lot of you used your bunt pans this weekend. You can visit them in St. Louis Park and save 5% when you mention Twin Cities Live. Okay,